to this week's UEth Weekly Workshop. So this session will be particularly fun. Uh, we're going to explore this world of blockchain-powered storytelling um, and for the sake of education. This is a strategic investment that we made here at the University of Ethereum, and I'm really excited to introduce you to ACE Trading Card Game. Our session today is titled The Magic of Web3 Gamifying Education featuring Colton Orr. And we will hear the story of ACE and how this trading card game weaves the metaverse mythology with the magic of Web3 technology. So here with us is Colton, who is one of the founders behind ACE. We'll hear how his journey started from conceptualization to where it is today and where it plans to go in the future. The whole point of ACE is to emphasize the role of storytelling and technology to shape a brighter, more interconnected future for everyone. So I'm Tina, your UEth host for this workshop. Over the past five years, I've been really immersed in the world of early stage venture investing, most recently focused in the crypto space. And I'm building upon this foundation in product and strategy. For this workshop, we'll kick things off with a quick introduction from Colton, followed by a deep dive into what the ACE metaverse looks like. He'll share more about the genesis of ACE, its mission, and how it plans to advance blockchain education via gameplay. So before we dive in, here's a few reminders. First, we're doing something a little different this time. We're now uh, switching from live workshops to pre-recorded workshops. But as always, you can always ask your questions. So if this conversation inspires any questions, please drop them into the general channel and we can address them asynchronously. And as always, make sure that your EUEth chapter stays active by commenting in our Discord within 24 hours of the release of this video. At UEth, we're really committed to inspiring our students with real life examples. And we always encourage you to dive into projects and learn by doing. So please challenge yourself to think about how you can leverage what you learned today to create meaningful impact in the blockchain space. So now I'm gonna welcome Colton uh, to the stage. Uh, Colton, it's great to have you here with us today. Um, I would love to start off with a few softball questions. Uh, the first being, would love for you to share a bit about your background and how this led to the creation of ACE. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for having me, Tina. Uh, and first, before I get into my personal background, I'll get into my uh, IRL background uh, because it's a bit unique and I may have people wander by. I am living off grid in the Southern California desert. desert. And behind me here is a big solar panel array. And I think this is when I put myself back in the shoes of students in particular. Um, I think this is an amazing opportunity to check out. It's called Mars College. And uh, currently, my tent is extremely hot, which is why I'm not in uh, my one sort of private area. I'm out here in a communal zone. So, Beyond the physical background, a little bit about me. Um, I started my career as a character artist on Spider-Man video games. So I was doing a bunch of suits like this. Uh, this was in the Miles Morales PlayStation 5 launch title. Did a lot of suits for that. Um, I also did the newest suit in the Spider-Man 2 video game that just came out last fall. And uh, I'll be getting into this a little bit in my talk, but I, as I fell down the Web3 rabbit hole a couple of years ago, um, this was the second NFT that I sold called Pixie. Um, hopefully the video comes through fine. This is sculpted in virtual reality. Uh, you can also just find it on my website if you want to see it. And uh, I sold NFTs like this for a while before getting into... Uh, some fundraiser NFTs as well. Um, and that was when I was working with Gitcoin. And you can find a lot more of this just on my portfolio here. But that is a little bit about my background. Cool. Um, I love for you to just even dive into how you got into crypto in the first place. Like what got you down the rabbit hole? Yeah. So growing up, I my family 
uh, and friends always just told me Bitcoin and crypto was a total scam. So every time I was uh, like a bull run would happen, I would just look the other way. And the moment that changed all of that for me was in 2020, a art friend sent along this NFT uh, article uh, or an article about NFTs, people in particular. Um, and it was this aha moment where I suddenly realized that uh, artists, digital artists could now sign their work similar to how a photographer signs a photograph. And before that, the only way that I could pay the bills as an artist was going to work for a company like Sony. And I wasn't particularly happy doing that at that point and realizing that there was this really fascinating wave uh, where digital artists were now taking their worth, their, their artwork that used to be worthless and now it was sometimes priceless. It just seemed like this incredible adventure that I really wanted to be a part of. Um, so I quickly fell down the rabbit hole, just binged a lot of podcasts and uh, yeah, got into crypto that way. I love that story. We've done a number of um, pot or a number of weekly workshops on this idea of how NFTs have really uh, disrupted this traditional art world as well as the traditional music world. And so it's really great to mm -hmm. hear your firsthand story of um, how that resonated for you. Um, well, cool. So I know we have a pretty amazing presentation on ACE today, but before we get there, we'd love to. Um, here you dig into this idea of why uh, gamify Web3 education and um, a few questions here for you. So why was it important for you to leverage this ACE asset to tackle the challenge of Web3 education? Mm, yeah, so when I think back about falling down the rabbit hole for my first time, I think a lot of us quickly stumble across all the YouTube videos just telling us about which token to buy. And that is most people's first interaction with some form of Web3 education. And it's not usually that helpful. <laughs> it's quite exciting because you can start quickly imagining the Lamborghinis you're going to be able to afford next week after you buy early to the next dog token. Um, but that's, again, it's just not really useful for a lot of people. Um, in fact, it can be really, really damaging. Um, beyond that, there are a lot of awesome resources out there. University of Ethereum, obviously, being my favorite just because of how they use really similar to what we do with ACE, a lot of storytelling. And they really uh, focus on the, the fundamental sort of reasons behind why crypto is useful. Um, but beyond that, like there are Binance has a great glossary and MetaMask has lots of learning resources as well. Um, I think the reason why I really, how we wanted to use ACE was that education can only sort of get you so far as humans. We want to, we learn by doing, right? And this is actually something that, again, the University of Ethereum, it's one of your core sort of values, something you talk about a lot. And this idea of using play uh, as a way of learning is the most intuitive way that we learn. Um, so when you think about a game that has that it's fun and it's engaging and it's something that you actually just want to keep engaging with over and over again, the way that we present Ace is as sort of this mental model of the crypto space. So as you play with it, you start to just understand all of the pieces of it that you could just read or learn by reading a book but that you might not like really fully develop a comprehensive understanding of so that's why we decided to use a, a game to approach this question yeah. of education no i love that answer um my actually the next question i had was around like what challenge do you see with web3 educational resources today but you you basically cover that right which is there's a ton of content out there there's a ton of like lore a ton of just things you just have to know from a historical context within crypto and a lot of times like crypto is so financialized that you're actually putting your right. own money at risk right and so there's got to be a more open source and more fun way of learning that engages people not from a gambling perspective but from a like this is truly fun perspective um cool so one last totally, question yeah. for you. 
uh, we get into your presentation. Um, but how did you come up with this idea of fusing the metaverse, like mythology type thing for Ace um, with the Web3 world? Yeah, I think this is always kind of an interesting question that I get because for me, it, it wasn't like this sort of inspirational, incredible moment. It was just so obvious because we already were co-creating this mythology. When we talk about people with lots of tokens as whales, there are unicorns on a bunch of different protocol websites. Um, we talk about trolls and Twitter frogs. Like there's all of this amazing sort of lore and and like ways that we're turning people into creatures and the crazy events and the villains that that pop up every cycle. Uh, it already felt like uh, a myth mythological adventure to so many of us that I think just going that final step and and just you know these days you can just type in a prompt like I want to see the frog com commander um, I think that's why it's really landed for a lot of people and why it was just a pretty easy thing to choose to spend your time on I love that because um, I always have this issue when I'm like creating things or thinking through things where um, if something seems really obvious to me, I don't feel like it's a good idea. But this is a good reminder that, you know, what you find obvious could be something that's like truly rare and insight that other people mm -hmm. um, haven't seen yet. So um, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Your and I think just on that point, too, it's like there's it's so fun to be creating this stuff too. It, it wasn't like a sort of product decision. It was, I'll get into this a little bit. Uh, actually, no, I'll mention it now because I don't talk about this in the, the um, talk. So this began a year ago um, when I had these trading cards or just collectible cards. There's no game or anything. And I just did this as like a side project. Like it wasn't supposed to be anything more than that. And I was, I had just launched this coloring book with a walkie, the, Founder of Gitcoin, and I just put like a couple of these cards in with the book, so it was for me just like a really fun and like we we're just talking about like this sort of obvious thing, uh, just like a, almost a playful activity for me. Um, and then just seeing the way that it resonated with people made us realize that it could actually be so much more. Amazing. Well, this is a great transition point to dive into your presentation. Um, I'm excited for you to share the the universe of Ace. Um, so I'm going to now go on mute and let you um, share with the audience for the next 10, 20 minutes uh, what you shared at ETH Denver already and give them a glimpse of the possibilities of leveraging this lore in Web3 education. Great. Thank you, Tina. Of course. So last year, when I came to ETH Denver, I shared an art project called The Infinite Garden, a collection of 20 physical collectible cards, each designed to embody a unique aspect of the crypto universe. After the event, I returned to living in my parents' basement. It was the bear market after all. And over the following 12 months, my brother and I turned those cards into a complete trading card game. The project sold out at DevConnect in Istanbul. And we're now partnering with the University of Ethereum to bring you the digital version. It'll look something like this. Now, some of you may see the screenshot and ask yourself, okay, what sets Ace apart from other collectible card games? First off, Ace is really fun to play because of its unique game mechanics. Second, the cards aren't designed just by us. They're created by the community. And then third, there's the story. A great narrative makes us care about the world we're engaged with. And Ace is my favorite kind of story because it isn't just fiction. Each card represents real world innovations and the heroes and villains behind them. The game has an ever expanding set of your favorite memes and crypto themes. And the cards feel meaningful because they reflect the real adventure we're all living. I think of this as metaverse mythology. To present this mythology, I'm going to use real cards from the game to illustrate my actual crypto journey. But because many of us tread a similar path, I think you'll find this story quite relatable. This is the crypto hero's journey. Chapter 1. The Ordinary World Anand had the dream position as a character artist on the Spider-Man video games. 
He worked alongside world-class game developers and artists on the hottest PlayStation 5 games. It was then Anon learned the saga of Beeple, an artist making extraordinary amounts of money using a strange new technology called NFTs. He immediately understood the significance of this technology for artists. Digital art had gone from worthless to priceless. How could one refuse such a call? He cast aside the security of his job and leapt down the mysterious rabbit hole. Chapter 2, Challenges and Temptations In the beginning, his aspirations were noble. Anon wanted to be an independent artist, to wield his work as a beacon of change. Yet the siren call of the bull market whispered sweet temptations. The fervor for NFTs reached all-time highs, and with meme coins minting new millionaires overnight, the promise of prosperity was irresistible. The mantra was simple. Get the alpha, board the rocket, and ascend to the moon. Ensnared by visions of laser ray to 100K, he dreamt of his inevitable Lamborghini, for he was no mere mortal. He was a giga-chad, armored in conviction, wielding the simple strategy of buy low and sell high. In the mirror of his mind, he was an invincible crypto bro. Yet beneath this facade, he was but a greedy little coin collector, clutching feverishly at every coin within his grasp. He dabbled in DeFi, chasing the elusive next airdrop, amassing a horde of altcoins, each promising to be the bane of Ethereum. He tried trading, but his ventures were fraught with peril and disappointment. He turned his hand to yield farming, only to find his efforts barren. He wanted to rage quit. Where were the fabled riches? Where was his golden ticket? When Lambo? In the crucible of his trials, he had to change strategies. He stashed away his coins and prepared himself for the next chapter of his journey. He had learned that in the crypto realm, it's best to choose participation over speculation. Chapter 3, Allies and Enemies With Bankless as his guide and an orange metafox by his side, he traveled west into new lands. His first adventure took him to the grand do-your-own-research library. There, he learned to not trust everything he heard and instead seek truth from legitimate parties. Wandering the hallowed library halls, he learned of Satoshi's spirit, why Bitcoin was created, and the ethos behind crypto and the cypherpunks. He learned of the fiat fountain, the mystical source of sky-high inflation. Around yet another corner, the ancient game of the prisoner's dilemma unfolded before him. He witnessed ruthless vampire attacks where emerging platforms drained liquidity from established ones. He uncovered account abstraction, a breakthrough that made crypto more accessible for everyday users. He delved into the world of zero-knowledge proofs that enhanced privacy and security for transactions. He explored Layer 2 ecosystems and the MEV bots that exploit the ordering of transactions. He learned about the threat to civil attacks where a single entity creates multiple fake identities to subvert a network. He learned about the Dao Reaper, an evil monster that crushed the Dao, and the Lazarus Group, a guild of hackers that stole millions from unsuspecting souls. Understanding monsters like these allowed him to successfully dodge rug pulls and the Discord DM demons. The Infinite Garden of Ethereum was as dangerous as it was promising, and he was a mere anon, wandering the land, seeking to level up his skills. His journey back into Monward, towards the Quadratic Lands. Chapter 4, The Innermost Cave When he arrived in the Quadratic Lands, he met a warlock they called Owaki. Owaki offered a choice. Take the green pill, and see the bright future they could build, or take the gray pill and return to the degenerate zero-sum games Anon had been playing. Anon took the green pill. The regen vision flashed before his eyes. The tragedy unfolded before him. He saw Moloch, 
the demon of coordination failure described in Slate Star Codex. Moloch tore at the very fabric of our good intentions, ensnaring us in a web of competition and self-destruction. Another flash, an alternative reality appeared. Win-wins enabled by Web3. They had the decentralized technology to coordinate humanity and just maybe slay Moloch. His next mission was clear. He joined a guild working on NFT fundraisers. They launched an NFT campaign that raised half a million dollars for Gitcoin grants. They were directly funding public goods like open source software and Web3 education. As his journey continued, he met more regens, worked alongside legendary characters, and uncovered the Ether's Phoenix and its paradigm-shifting retroactive public goods funding abilities. The summer was hot. Everything was up and to the right. They should have known the winter was coming. Chapter 5, The Ordeal. A manifestation of Moloch had been gaining power. With his legion of zealous followers, it seemed the Luna Empire was unstoppable. Yet overnight, the fragile edifice shattered in spectacular fashion. The token's downfall erased fortunes in the blink of an eye, and the devastation rippled far beyond, unleashing a contagion that ravaged the crypto lands. Countless souls were swept away in the merciless tides of liquidation. Just as the remnants of the storm seemed to settle, a final extraordinary blow-up sunk untold fortunes into the abyss. Chapter 6, The Road Back As the dust settled, lawmakers cast their gaze upon the fractured crypto realm. Politicians spoke loud with their eyes wide shut. Sanctions crushed innovations. Protocols were outlawed. The whale population decreased significantly. Many retail investors got paper hands and left with their losses. Together with survivors of past cycles, they watched the bear market sweep across the land. Chapter 7, The Reward The winter was upon them, but this was just the beginning of their journey. Anon had made a steady income through grants and art projects, and met incredible friends through new Web3 communities like Zuzulu. We live between two worlds, the ordinary world and the special world of crypto. Ace is our vision of bridging those worlds through a fun experience about the crypto hero's journey. We believe Web3 is magic, and by learning to wield this magic, we can shape a better global society. The cards I just showed represent my crypto journey, but like I said, many of us shared this path, and there are many adventures to come. Ace is one journey that I hope we embark on together. As of now, Ace actually has two games. A finite game where players compete, and an infinite game where players create cards and balance mechanics. Let's begin with the finite game. So for the gameplay, flash gems spark awesome comebacks, Ace cards lead to epic final action sequences. Shields are an intuitive way to protect against unfun matches while opening the door to cool new mechanics. And keep the basic rules simple so you can jump right in. But don't let that fool you. There's a whole world of sneaky strategies and clever plays that you can master. So whether you're planning your next big move or pulling off an epic comeback, Ace is all about those unforgettable moments that will have you wanting to play again. All right, so we've got a really fun competitive game. Now let's switch gears and talk about the infinite game. The way games are made is changing. Two people made Ace. And with the new game design tools and this extraordinary new wave of AI, we don't have to build a large team to make a digital version. That means we can do things differently. Unlike those big traditional franchises that keep rehashing the same stories and games, Ace breaks free from top-down narratives with designs and mechanics dreamed up by you. It's like we're all sitting around a giant table throwing in our best ideas for new cards, tweaking the rules, and evolving the game to be more dynamic and exciting than ever. Some of the most popular cards in the Alpha Edition were created by the community. And this is just the beginning. Collective creativity also fosters a deep sense of ownership and connection. When you create a card, you're leaving your mark on Ace's ever-expanding universe. And it doesn't stop at creating card designs. One thing I'm really excited about is by using generative AI, 
anyone can easily craft skins for their favorite cards. Skins can make designs more personal, take the story of a card in a new direction, or just create a flavorful way to celebrate the upcoming holiday. Anyone can also create new playing fields that capture the vibrant diversity of the crypto landscape. Each of those contributions can be rewarded through tokenomics or NFTs. Because remember, with NFTs, everything you create or collect in the game is yours to keep, trade, or expand upon. Each card is a little piece of the Ace universe. And who knows, card design you, could, you create could be the next big hit or even spark a whole new game or story within the Ace world. So we've talked about narratives and art, and when it comes to balancing, many games crumble when their decentralized teams make unilateral decisions that don't align with the community's desires. Ace takes a different approach. You found a card that's too OP, or maybe you've got an idea for a card that could shake things up. Jump in, and let's make sure that each change is embraced and celebrated by those who play Ace the most. So in closing, we have a game that's really fun to play and an ever-evolving adventure that you can be a part of. I invite you to join us on this epic journey, create a card, tell your story, and shape the world of Ace. Together, let's discover just how incredible a game can be when it's limited only by our collective imagination. Now, one final, final piece is that uh, just before GDC, uh, Jamil, uh, an amazing person here on Mars College, put together the first version of our card creator. And we got to use this a whole lot at East Denver. And it's something uh, that you can easily access through the Discord. Um, and we can also probably just link to this. And this is an easy way to just spin up new cards. So there's a whole creations channel in the Discord where you can see cards that other people have been making. I'll actually share that right now. And the fun part here has been at East Denver, people were looking through the cards asking if we had a card about uh, CZ, for example. And when we said no, we could follow that up with, but you can go and make a card right now. And this just really well aligns with uh, Yuit's goal of just having, um, like, participating. Right? Again, that idea of participation over speculation. It's about actually building things, creating things. So there's a creations channel here that you can jump into and just see so many cool cards people are making. And the very last piece I'll add is that uh, we have so amazing people have been joining the ecosystem. And if you really want to go deep into creating your own cards, we'll be holding a workshop next week that uh, Hype will be uh, presenting at. And he did some absolutely exceptional art. He's in uh, Mid Journey, and he'll be sharing a bit about his process uh, using both Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion. So lots of creative ways that you can get involved with the project, again, actually learn by doing. So thank you very much. Amazing. Um, we'll, we will definitely send out those links for you on your behalf, um, both in our newsletter as well as uh, link it to this YouTube video. Um, but I think ACE is one of my favorite projects out there just because it's so like cool and um, it's definitely got this like really magical element, um, especially when you hear your crypto hero's journey, like the way that you presented it. Um, but for the next section of the workshop, uh, we're going to move towards Q&A. So again, for anyone who's watching this, if this conversation inspires any questions, please drop them in our Discord chat and we will make sure to get an answer back to you. Um, the thing that I do want to touch on is um, this this uh, strategic alliance, right, or a strategic partnership that we formed with ACE that we've mentioned a few times. Um, and what that really means is uh, we, one of our team members just loved the ACE um, universe so much. Um, and it started out as like very physical cards that we're now helping sort of digitize this experience as well as get it proliferate it to the hands of many um, in this attempt to set a standard for blockchain education as well as uh, Web3 onboarding. And so really this like partnership is a commitment um, to this idea of open source blockchain education and the ability to nurture this next generation of uh, blockchain learners, 
creators and leaders. Um, and what I truly, truly love about all of this is that ACE is one of the more um, intriguing ways that we've seen people take this approach of trying to make blockchain technology and blockchain history more engaging um, and accessible for learners of all levels. And so our hope here is that we get to onboard the next few million users of crypto um, to explore Web3 in this like fun, gamified, educational way. Um, but in this section of the Q&A, I really wanted to touch on some questions around vision and product, as well as your community and ecosystem. Um, the first question here is like, how did you even figure out what Web3 con uh, concepts to like create or like make into these cards? And mm. how did you know they were comprehensive? That is such a great question. And it's absolutely one that alone, I cannot, I cannot, like I will fail at that. And obviously the cards have clicked with people up to this point. Um, but Web3 is so, so vast and we want to go so far beyond even perhaps even beyond just the niche of, of Web3. And the community collaboration part of this is not just sort of this almost like marketing angle to like get people creating user generated content. It's the only way we can capture this vibrant diversity of the Web3 world. Everybody who's involved with it has some perspective, even if you're brand new to it. Like that is a perspective. I know I had a strong perspective coming into it. And the fact that everybody can start contributing their, their ideas and then learn more about Web3 mechanisms through, I mean, this is not something that we've launched yet, but the curation mechanisms, then, okay, we have, say, 10,000 different card ideas. How do we narrow that down to the cards that really should be created? Um, people can be participating through the curation mechanisms as well and learning more about Web3. And ultimately, that whole sort of funnel comes out with what I hope to be almost like these, these packets of information, like memes in the like not funny sense, but memes is just like the ideas that can create that mental model that we hope everybody has in order to be digitally literate. And this kind of goes towards this question of what are some like Web3 features of ACE that users can expect and how does it set it apart from traditional trading card games? Yeah, so the basic pieces here would be there are a number of uh, companies out there that have said, okay, something like Blizzard, Blizzard's Hearthstone is very, very popular, but users don't own any of their cards. So when you picture like Pokemon cards, for example, I, own, I buy the packs, I have the cards. If you play a digital trading card game right now, you, you buy the packs, you pay real money for them, but the digital cards you don't own. You Like in Hearthstone, you just dust them. <laughs> it's just like incinerating them, right? And the obvious play there is, well, people should actually own their cards. So turn them into NFTs. Really straightforward. But I, especially as a creative, go much, much farther than that. What I'm really excited about, and, and I want to integrate this as soon as possible, is say you're a new creative coming in, or you're just one of those people with a great idea. The card that you create, you should get the creator NFT of that and get some type of, of perk, whether that is just the, the social cred for making some awesome new card, or really what I hope is, is some type of downstream revenue, right? If you create the, the Charizard that everybody loves, then perhaps every time that's traded or when it evolves into some other type of creature, um, there's some type of flow back to you. So experimenting with the creative economy, um, I think there's so much that we can do with, with tokenomics and I'm really excited to be exploring that. Amazing. Um, well, aside from what you just shared, uh, maybe in the near future, as you see Ace evolving, um, what are some exciting developments that players could expect? Well, I think a big part of it is uh, even before we have tokenomics, it's things like like these um, creativity sessions. So I used to call these triage sessions back when it was just, again, me living in my parents' basement. I would do Zoom calls with small groups of people. We would jump into Miro, which is this big whiteboarding app. 
and I would have three themes like, okay, we're doing the FTX stuff this week. And another thing that happened is uh, the merge happened. And we'd all just like write down a bunch of ideas. And we had the next section, we generate a bunch of art. And then we would take a few minutes voting on all of our different favorite pieces. Maybe we come up with flavor text. And it was just this really fun way of, of like sort of gamifying the creative process. And that's what we're going to be rebooting now. Uh, and it, I'm really excited about it because we have a bigger community. We have incredibly talented people like uh, I was just highlighting. And I think this is something that people can get really excited about uh, even before we have any form of tokenomics. Yeah. What, what's the scale of the ACE community and how is the community feedback from East Denver? So the community feedback was uh fantastic <laughs> our booth was basically always just packed with people we were playing the game a whole lot uh, you can see some highlights on our, our twitter if people are curious um we just started the discord right before that so i think there's under 200 people that are in there now but you can also turn that around and go 200 real people that all connected with us and who are just like fanatics about the game um, is i'm really really happy to be there already. So yeah, reception's been incredible. Um, reception from other chains and, and potential collaborators and partners was also, um, it really couldn't have been better. People were very excited about Ace. Yeah, I, I was there at the booths and I, I could tell y'all were just swamped the entire time. I think it's really rare to at this time, like when you go to East Denver, there are so many booths competing for attention to be able to grab that level of um, just excitement. And so I, I love that mm -hmm. it's had this mass appeal for like, crypto natives, but I'm curious, like what challenges would you anticipate in terms of onboarding non-crypto users? And what conviction do you have that this type of a game could appeal to them? Yeah, I think the first reason is that when we were testing this game, we only tested it with people not in Web3. And the fact that they loved it, they didn't know what a merge panda was, but they uh, played it and they were really curious to, to learn more. Um, sorry, there's a plane going over, so let me know if I have to repeat any of this. But I think just seeing the way that it clicked with people who are not in Web3 at all was it gave me a lot of confidence early on that this is a way of onboarding people. I think the other thing that we're exploring more is that there are a lot of deep cuts and like really niche stuff, even in Web3 in this first set. And it's always exciting to the people who get some of those references. But I think we're also heading more in the direction of, of creating ideas that are accessible and perhaps more useful to average people. Hmm. I guess um, you kind of touched on this earlier, but I'm curious what opportunities you might see for collaboration um, within the blockchain gaming ecosystem and community partners. So two different pieces there for me. So one of them would be uh, other, other games you mentioned. I think the really exciting thing there is just the composability aspect. Like we had a number of people walk up and go, okay, you have these cards. They're basically all these interesting, cool creatures and things that have happened. And you s have started seeing a bit of this in Web3 Gaming. It just hasn't necessarily been like a lot of fun or well executed. That idea of uh, taking something from one game and then just because these NFTs are all on the blockchain, mm -hmm. you can just like bring that into another game. And we can kind of think long term and picture our metaverse worlds and, and going from one game universe to another. Uh, if anybody's seen Ready Player One, that's often the analogy that people or like the, the imagery that people jump to, or it's like all of your favorite characters from childhood are all running around in the same universe together. Um, I think there are much like earlier versions of that that we'll start to see that'll just be really fun. And again, that's why it's important to actually like own the things that you're playing with. The other one that I think we might see even sooner uh, is partnerships with, say, um, groups like Boys Club or other um, crypto native uh, DAOs that are out there, especially folks that are focused more on um, onboarding. 
Um, I think, again, as sort of an educational tool, this is something we've seen click really well with those communities, uh, but we haven't really shared it too much with them. So mm-hmm. I think I think we'll be seeing more of those partnerships evolve too. Can you still buy Ace trading cards or like how can people get their hands on a set? Yeah, so unfortunately and fortunately, we've sold out completely of the Alpha Edition. Uh, so yeah, launched in Istanbul, sold out of those cards, still had some in the States, and then we sold the rest of those at ETH Denver. So at this point, uh, have no fear. There will be many more cards coming. They will not be the Alpha Edition. It will be uh, something even greater. And I think you can anticipate uh, probably in, in the next three to four months, there will be a lot happening both in the digital world, if you can't get your hands on the physical cards, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll tease a little bit of Alpha and say we'll probably have a very strong presence at EdCon in Tokyo. So if you want to pick up some physical cards, put that on your radar. Yeah, I think that'll be a really cool experience in the Japanese community. Um, mm-hmm. Well, cool. Um, one last question for you before we close. Um, can you share any like memorable stories from the ACE TCG community or just one story that really stuck with you? Hmm. Wow. Uh, so I think one that I've personally been celebrating quite a bit um, was a, a very, I'm not even going to mention names here, but like a somebody who I respect a lot in the space came up to us at ETH Denver and just said, I don't want to kill your supply, but I just want to buy as many of these as possible. <laughs> they had apparently been looking for something like this in the space for many years. And I think just getting that type of validation um, meant meant a lot. I think the other thing that was really wonderful to see was one, uh, my brother, who I created this whole game with, um, getting to see him interacting with the community for the first time. And, and he was the person who's actually teaching people at ETH Denver. So I was standing at the booth, sort of facing out, talking to people and being able to turn around and see all of these folks just smiling, laughing, all these people that they just met. Um, I think that was super rewarding. Those are both really top of mind for me right now. I love that. I still need to learn how to play the game. I'm literally thinking of, should I just frame these? Because they're so pretty, but I should probably learn how to play. <laughs> um, cool. I've definitely seen the frames around cards like the Phoenix in particular. <laughs> yeah, that's pro- that's my favorite card. Um, well, uh, we're going to close out on this session. Um, so as always, we share a recap of this uh, session via our newsletter. We'll send it out and we will also write a blog. Um, I think this in this particular sense, we actually wrote a blog announcing our strategic investment in ACE. Uh, we'll tag it in the newsletter as well as this YouTube video. Uh, but you can definitely expect um, additional blogging material about ACE in the future once we have some future components launched and other roadmap uh, pieces to share. Um, but Colton, um, would love for you to give some part- parting words of advice. Um, what um, advice would you give to aspiring um artists, creators, or students looking to enter the blockchain industry. Um, And if you don't mind, can you just recap any resources you would recommend for individuals looking to engage with ACE? Mm, Yeah, excellent question. So my go-to resource really since the beginning has been the Bankless podcast. I think that's such a great way of uh, hearing very good sort of fundamentals about crypto, but really just like kind of staying up on on what's been happening. Um, they're really good guys over there. And, and and then of course University of Ethereum to really get the strong fundamentals. Um, I think the th- things that I would just if I could speak back to myself a couple of years getting into the space, um, it's it's a wild, wild adventure. Uh, it, you will learn so much about yourself. Um, Taking just the investing side, uh, for example, where 
you will be sure you are the smartest investor and that you are making the right decisions. And it is fascinating to realize um, just the tricks that our minds can play on us. So you'll learn a lot about yourself. And you will also meet incredible, incredible people. And it's super important early to, to realize from the very beginning that while it can be a very volatile space, it can be a lot of emotions, um, it's really important to just realize it's it's quite small, especially if you're going to actually be involved with like building things, going to these events, you will see the same faces over and over again. And it's really important to not burn bridges and to build up friendships with as many people as possible. Um, the most rewarding part about being through all of this is been all of my closest friends have have come through this adventure of crypto. Um, it's what brought me to Mars College. Uh, it's what brought me to Zuzalu and all of the amazing communities that I spent time with. Beyond just like making an income through it, um, that has been absolute key, the, like the most important part. So understand that your reputation is is everything, and friendships are so important in this space. Yep, it is. It does feel like everyone's like late to crypto and there's a lot of FOMO, but it's still oh, very <laughs> And you're right. The the circles are quite small in crypto and you just got to be a good actor or it catches up to you. Um, mm -hmm. Well, cool. Uh, we will definitely share out any resources, um, including ACES, Telegram, Discord, and other links um, that would be useful for individuals looking to um, get involved with ACE or just start creating their own cards. Um, please keep an eye out for comms uh, with the newsletter, with the blog, and for our announcements on our next workshop and community spaces. We did host a community space um, that was recapping ETH Denver last week. Uh, we'll have links to that as well. Um, and please take a look and see if you can gather any insights from ETH Denver if you missed it. So thank you all for watching this and um, great to have you all join us and we'll see you at our next workshop. <laughs>